Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to show you how to create this crown set signal ring with the Rhino 3D software. Are you ready? Let's get started. All right, so for this ring right here, I'm going to start building signal ring and quickly to build a simple one. And I wanted to show you how to calculate enough metal for the Jura to setting for this stone. Please understand that this is like when you are finished setting what it will look like. If you're going to give it to the jeweler, you might want to edit up the height over here. Uh, so the jeweler does have uh, some metal to push over the stone and to finish it. And then after they shape it, it will look like this. So keep in mind that the ring is currently look like when you finish what uh, the ring should look like on the bench. So that's starting from the scratch. All right, so you can download the stone from the description below and all you need to do is the sign up the newsletter and I promise I won't send you junk. All right, so that's starting with the ring size. I want to set it up for diameter for 16 and again, you can set it up for any of the ring size for whatever that you're going to print. Currently the stone is about four millimeter. If you want them to be bigger, all you need to do is coming into the 3D scale and then you want to snapping vertex to the vertex. So here to here and just type it uh, the number that you want. Let's say I want it to be five millimeter and then this will be exact five millimeter. Once we have it, we're gonna starting to draw the shape of the stone. Uh, first of all, let's go to the top view and I'm going to draw a circle right there. With this circle, um, it's going to be two circle. One is how much is going to cut it in here. So that's the first one. And the second one is I'm going to set it up for about how thick your prong is going to be. So we are going to get this something look like this. All right. And ideally as a stone, like if this is a prong or this is any of the metal, as long as your stone is not over 25%, then you should be safe. All right. So then we got those two circle there. I'm going to moving those two circle to where I want them to finish to be. So again, if this is for the rendering, you want to finish your prong is about half of the table size, which is from this point to this point. All right, so half of this size. Now, if you want it to be for Jura to set a stone, you do actually want to set them higher so your Jura will have enough to cut it open. All right, so I'm just going to put it here right in the middle for the rendering purpose on this one. Okay, so once you have those two set it up, we're gonna come in into the front view and we're gonna draw the rest of it. First of all, bottom of the ring shank goes snapping into the zero. I'm going to go from somewhere here to here. In order to make it look nicer, I'd also like to taper the ring shank on the bottom just a little bit so it will look nicer. Then we wanna connect from this point to the quadrant right here. Coming into the curve, you have the extended curve. Then you're gonna go from the arc to the point, right? So this is the arc and this is the point. All right, so that quadrant is the point. So go again from the arc, which is go, gonna go from the curve from here and snapping into the quadrant. All right, let's take a look on the top view. This is what it looked like. Right, so I know in, on this front view, the profile look like this, and this should be, you know, the profile for my shank. And then, but I don't know how thick that is, the, how fat do you want it to have, right? So I'm going to creating another shape, and this shape simply just using the ellipse, but choose the second ones from the diameter. So I can snap in into this quadrant here and quadrant here and decide how thick you want it to have, right? And then the third one is I also need to have another one right here to show what's the profile is going to look like. Look like this is a little bit too fat here. All right, so then I'm gonna go from the top, snapping to the quadrant, quadrant. You can snap in into here if you want to, it's not necessary. But one thing is you want to snap in right here with your smart track is on and moving back a little bit and click on this point. That way you won't get the sharp edges and that part is quite important, right? So now we have this 
and we can use the curve network to create it. But now for the curve network, this is an open curve. This is an open curve, but I do want it to split right there as well. So that one's going to be split with this one right there. So I have one, two, and three. All right, so I have three curve. Now, once I have an open curve, I need this one to be open curve, this one to be open curve as well. So I'm gonna have that one split by this one and this one. So that I split this way and the circle as well split by this curve and this curve. So I have it half. All right, so to creating the surface, we simply just go into with, go with the curve network and we're gonna pick up one two and three remember to pick in the older all right and then four and then five and then you hit enter then you will get something like this now if you click on the record history on the bottom you click ok and if you feel like hey i feel like i need to have it puffier right and then so i'm going to move in this one out the surface will still moving with you that's the advantage of using the record history Okay, so now we have something like this. All I need to do is to mirror to the other side like that. And then we're gonna join them and it will break the history. That's okay because we no longer need to adjust it. And then we're gonna using the cap command CAP and we close the one on the top. All right, so now this is a solid. And I also want to cut out the ring. So I'm going to use the extrude planar curve command and to extrude the ring size. And then we just do the Boolean different this one out of this one. All right, so voila, I have a ring there. All right, now a lot of time it doesn't to be too obviously in my case right here, but sometimes you will have this uh, bump coming up, then you will need to rebuild it. But it seems like it's not too much problem in our case. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Now that's starting planning how we're going to cut it. First of all, let's go ahead to creating a cylinder. And this cylinder is going to be right in the center right here. Whatever size, it doesn't matter. We're going to adjust it anyway. All right. And now I want to have this cylinder to cut it in inside. All right. Of course, this is too fast. So let's go ahead 1D scale to be the proper size. Okay. Now coming into my perspective, you can see this is kind of cutting in too big of the surface. And it is parallel to my construction plan, but I want it to be more in taper, right? So the way, the quicker way to use a taper, make sure your gumball is on, holding on control and shift and click on the surface right here. And we're just going to do one D scale it down right there. And as you can see, now I have this taper, right? We're going to keep editing until we find a proper one, but we also need to tilt it a little bit to give it a little bit like angle. So then once you cut it out, it will look nice. All right, let's give it a try. Come back to the top view. We want to use that one to do the polar array. So snapping into the center, I want to type it zero and I want a six piece for 360 degree and then we'll get something like that. All right. So what are we actually looking at is actually this space right here, right? So the space right here, I want them to be the prong size. So you need to look at it. Is this too big? Is this too small or things like that? Okay, once we have something that we like and we can give it a cut and see how does that look like. So we're going to pick up here and bowling difference out of here. Sometimes if the bowling fail, it may have a seam aligned. So I'm going to do it one more time and just do one by one and see if, if that fail. So there's nothing wrong with the shape. It's just sometimes seams aligned and maybe sometimes it has two pieces there. All right, but I do notice one thing though. I do not like this orientation here. So I may want to rotate them. I'm gonna rotate them 30 degree. So I do not have a hole right in the middle there. It's up to you, depends on how you like it. But also when you have something like that, notice that this is like uh, cutting into it. Uh, let me show you. If I bowl in difference, this one out of this one, you're going to see a cut there. So the way to fix it is either I'm going to delete this one 
either have this to rotate it a little bit more and so it doesn't cut it into it or it just make them longer all right and once you like it just go ahead to mirror to the other side and then work at something like this all right so let's give it a try we're gonna do ball indifference this one out of all six of them and then we'll get something like this all right the other problem is that what we have here it doesn't have the hole to go through it so you can see there's a weird cut over there under the stone uh, all the facet stone you need to have a hole to go through so we're gonna have that piece for the circle that we draw earlier and then we're gonna extrude it planar curve straight something like that and we're gonna bull in difference this one out of this one all right so then if you take a look on the render view you will see the stone there's nothing behind it and then, then you just need to fit it the edges of the this opening for what you have and after you fit it and also fit it inside of a ring shank then you will get this crown set on the signal ring i hope you enjoy the video i have a lot more trick and tips to show you on my membership a small amount of a monthly donation to my membership is going to help me in the long run to keep creating the video for everybody for free thank you for watching and i'll see you in the member program